After years of analog success, lifelong media vets Martin and Paul are entering the digital unknown, relying on AI to navigate their unfamiliar environment. Join these plucky, wisecracking founders as they document the genuine struggles and harebrained antics of using machine learning to launch their startup's podcast. Will artificially intelligent guides rocket them to digital disruption? Or will the learning curve squash their scrappy moxie? Stay tuned for the triumphant failures of two savvy dinosaurs striving to evolve on the meat puppets. Savvy dinosaurs! Savvy dinosaurs! <laughs> I love the way he says that. Savvy dinosaurs. I love trailer guy. He's ace. I think we should put that at the head, Martin. We're going to put that at the head. So you, yeah. you, you just listen to that. We're going to do some more on that later. So keep listening. We're launching a digital company. Where are all the humans? Humans are just sat downstairs in their pants. Exploring a digital future. And if everyone's happy and AI's providing for me, I'll be an AI slave. And I'm just going to trust the answer. <laughs> if that doesn't scare the living out of you, I don't know what would. <laughs> make some chaos, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Can we make some money while we sleep? I was saying if you were a bot. <laughs> <laughs> to which it replied, nope. It's all going to be done by AI and we are, or we're not, meat puppets, we're not sure yet. This could be one of many episode ones. Hi, I'm Martin Riley. I am in my loft somewhere between Wales and Germany. I'm just going to think of random places yeah. every time. Okay, I, I'm Paul and I'm in my spare room somewhere between, I'm going to go east-west, Poland yeah, and the Isle of Man. And this is the Meat Puppet. I've learned something this week. I've, I've learned to lock my chair so it doesn't make loads of noise. Well done. Well, I was just going to say, so we sent episode one, the third version of episode one, to a few people yesterday just so they could have a listen to it. And we got some feedback. And one of the things everyone said is don't ramble at the beginning. Hey, just get into your bloody subject. So I'm going to try now okay. off the top of my head really quickly just to say what it is that we're doing. Okay. So what, here we go. What, what are we doing, Martin? So what we're doing is, and for God's sake. <laughs> Amazing. Right. No, here we go. So what we're doing. So this is the Meat Puppets and myself and Paul used to work in film and telly and music and stuff. And we were pretty successful. At, and then we just decided to ditch it all and start a digital company and a digital company that makes tools and like gains audiences that benefits the work we used to do. And this podcast is meant to be all about how we did that or failed at doing that. And the other thing is that we're using AI to help us or guide us or just, you know, hence the name, meat puppets. We're being controlled by the AI or are we controlling the AI? Who knows? But anyway, that's what we're doing. Well done. How that was, that? was I, d I didn't time it in classic VO style. I should have done, but yeah. I, it felt fast. Right. Well, I just said it really fast. Yeah. Whether or not it made any sense. Anyway. <laughs> go on. What are you saying? No, nothing. I was going to ask you to do it again with a bit more of a smile on your face. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, God. Um, and then uh, other comment was that if you're saying stuff that are industry terms, explain them. So what does a smile on your face mean, Paul? Um, it means it didn't sound very happy and you're a rubbish VO artist. Oh. It doesn't actually. What it means is, is I'm a NAF producer and that's the only thing I've got to say. Fair enough. <laughs> so this week's episode is is here's something to entice you in is about a really boring subject <laughs> which we're going to attempt to make exciting copyright copyright <laughs> copyright uh, and it's relevant to what we're doing because it's how creatives make money really yes um and you can make an entire business out of copyright so yep. just to explain what the hell copyright is so it's intellectual property law that gives creators of original works, so that's books, music, art, whatever, exclusive yep. rights over their works for a certain amount of time. Yep. Can, uh, can we, can we going forward, can we say uh, IP? Uh, you so, know, like when you're reading something, it has it in brackets, IP. I've just yeah. inserted that there. Right. Sorry. IP. Yeah, IP. no, that's fine. Just so just in case nobody knew what, what it meant, you know. So it, it basically means that if you create something new, so as soon as you scribble something down, you own that, and then you have a control over that and you can decide to charge people money uh, to let them use it. So that could be, you know, reprint a book, that could be reproduce a picture, that could be play your music on the radio. Yep. Anything like that. Yep. 
And this came into being, I didn't know this before I was researching this. Um, so it was in 1709 to 1710 in the UK at least. And it's a statute, statute of Anne. And it granted book, uh, printers of books legal protection for 14 years. Uh, and it also granted 21 years of protection for any book already in print. So that's where it came in. And I think it was because right. technology came in and it was easy to copy stuff. Yeah. And the people okay. who'd usually spent years penning a book were like, oh, hang on, someone can just copy it. <laughs> yeah. That's not fair. <laughs> Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? It does sound very familiar. No. Same with music. Same with music. Um, yeah. So copyright holders earn money by charging what are called royalties or fees when other people use the work. And they can license those fees, i.e. give permission to other people, so publishers, producers, radio stations. And it's a major part of music, film and TV and other creative industries. It's how people make money. Now, digital's already impacted this world, so never mind, like, copying books. Um, suddenly the internet uh, appeared and suddenly everyone could distribute anything without having to physically do anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was terrifying for those people who made money out of it um, yeah. but it also uh, created new revenue streams like streaming subscriptions, digital downloads basically those things you forget to cancel yeah. once you've signed up to them and you end up with a Spotify account and an Amazon Music account and a Tidal account Netflix, Apple TV, yeah. Now TV, Amazon Prime Oh, it, it goes on and on so there are other ways of earning money, it's not all bad um, there is a... Um, Oh, uh, a defense. So like if you use something that you've not got permission for, you haven't paid for, there's this thing in the UK at least called fair use as well. I should mention this. Fair use uh, basically allows you to use little bits of copyrighted material for education or if you're commenting on it and it aims to promote creativity and free expression. So if you didn't have that and like say you were reviewing a film and you wanted to play a clip from it, the idea that you'd have to go to the copyright owners and pay them for that clip and negotiate a rate seems a bit crazy. So yeah. they brought in this thing called fair use. And I think it's around about 30 seconds you get. And the main thing here is that it doesn't form the main bit of your entertainment. So you can't go, I love this film, play Top Gun. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. But you can go, oh, there's this line where he says this and he sounds really stupid. And he's yeah. like, goes, you can be my wingman anytime. And then you go and carry on chatting about it. So that's that. Um, this area is massive. Massive. It's super complicated. Caused me and you hours of pain over the years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially when trying to deal with telly or advertising or even just starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. So YouTube. we're not we're not going to cover all of it. We're just going to cover areas that we've got experience in and uh, chat through how it could affect what we're trying to do. Yeah, I think we're going to chat where it's AI relevant, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, the yeah. latest threat to this and the latest confusion is AI generated content. And that will yeah. bring us directly, quickly, succinctly quickly. to yeah. a sting. Good Back sting. AI generated sting. AI generated. What else? So I think that was pretty quick, Martin. It, I think it was under eight minutes. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but you know, it's about that. It's not bad. And maybe not I was just bad. rambling. Examining all, all will the be time. revealed in the edit, mate. Yeah. Self-examining all the time because you kind of want to have a little bit of witty banter, whatever that means, versus just going, this is an essay all about copyright. Copyright's really boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's do a podcast about copyright. It's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> don't know whose idea that was yours i think i don't think it was paul <laughs> i think at this moment i'm gonna blame chat gpt uh, a lot of this the content of this podcast we're kind of relying a little bit on ai to suggest what the hell we should talk about and what might be important to people i think this is important anyway and actually as a question that that has come up anyway organically should we say well the biggest question is who owns ai generated content yeah paul right so i'm just looking at the list which is uh, <laughs> under the big question which says who owns ai generated content yeah 
I can answer one of them really clearly. So I'm going to do that. Go and do that. Do that. Mid journey, which is the image generation tool. And they are really quite clear about it. If you prompt mid journey on yeah. a paid account, you own it. What? Yep. Say that again. If you prompt mid journey on a paid account, you own it. Uh, okay. So for the uninitiated. Mid Journey yeah. is a, a website you can go to. It's technically on Discord, but let's not worry about that for now. Yeah. And you can just write some words and it generates a picture based on those words. Yeah. Now, here's where it gets a little bit fuzzy. So there are three paid tiers on Mid Journey. And on the first tier, you do own it, but you can pretty much do nothing with it. Well, that's a waste of time. Yeah. Can, you put, it, you, can you put it on your wall? Yeah, I think you can do that. Yeah. But I don't think you can put it out in the world anywhere. Right. On their second tier, um, you own it. You can license it. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. Yeah. Um, but on the second tier, you cannot stop Mid Journey publishing that on their feed. But you still own it? Yes. But you can't stop them using it? Yes. Well, o other people can't use it, but Mid Journey can. Right. Okay. So you can still do what you want with it, but yeah. Mid Journey can go, hey, look, Paul's made this picture. This is amazing. Correct. Do you want yeah. to make a picture like that? Pay me some money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on the third tier, well, put it this way. I read this about three months ago. It all might have changed. Yeah. And on the, and on the third tier, you can, you go on it and you can do it stealthily, as in they don't publish it. Got you. Got you. Yeah. So the point being here, there are several websites that we've used throughout the years and that the BBC use, even Netflix yeah. use, and they're yeah. called stock image sites. Yeah. And this is like a load of content, which is all tagged so you can search it. And if yeah. you want, you know, a sunset over a beach, you search for sunset over a beach and it gives yeah. you some options. You pick one and then depending how you want to use it, you pay them a load of money. Yeah. And that their marketplaces, most of them, yeah. Right. What's the big one that, that all the news people use? Getty. And Getty. Yeah. yeah. That's like a marketplace as well, isn't it? Quite yeah. exclusive. Really expensive. Like really expensive. But even, so you've got Getty up at the top and then yeah. iStock photos below that. And yeah. then below that, you've got Shutterstock. And then there's yeah. loads of others below that. And I mean that in yeah. terms of quality of picture, yeah. but also of price. You can pay anything from 20 quid to four grand for a picture. Yeah. And the rest. How much is Mid Journey, Paul? A month? Yeah. Uh, quickly search his bank account. Don't know. About 15 quid. <laughs> Between 15 and 20 pounds. Something like that. And how many images can you generate for that? Uh, it do works in hours of render time. Right. So Give me in... a number of pictures. So anyone can. Oh, loads. About. Loads. Right, great. Loads. Enough. Yeah. So loads of pictures for like 20 quid. Or yeah. one picture for four grand. Yeah. And all you need to do is take a look on uh, Twitter and search Mid Journey. They're incredible. Yep. Actually, you're starting to see it. I've started seeing it everywhere now. I spend quite a bit of time on um, Spotify and the likes of Beatport and, you know, other places like that, lots of music places. And you, you are seeing uh, record covers. All of them are starting to be generated and you can see why. It's yeah, simple and fast. So put simply, all the stock music sites must be pooping themselves. Like, yeah, uh, stock image sites, you mean? What did I say? Music, idiot. But that's another conversation. We might just get yeah, onto yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So there are other ones. There's there's Dali, uh, there's Leonardo, yeah. uh, there's yeah. Runway, where you can even generate video. So it's a massive threat to existing businesses who sell access to stock images, right? Yeah. But I think I've noticed even on Shutterstock, you can buy AI generated images. Yeah, you can. I, the, so that, that is something new. I mean, because it's a marketplace, that's what people have been doing on the quiet, haven't they? Um, as in, if you're a member of that marketplace, a lot of people have been generating images on there. Yeah. And selling them to the uninitiated, if you like. <laughs> as in people Almost. who don't know you can go to mid journey. Yeah. Or yeah. are scared Didn't of it. There is a learning curve, though. It's not, I don't think you can just go to these places and immediately get the images you want. Because I, I, 
I have spent a fair amount of time generating images and a couple of times I have gone, it would have been quicker to go to stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, well, it doesn't quite, you know, you get someone, you think, oh, that's good. And then you look at the hand and you've got nine fingers or something yeah. like that. Yeah, there is that. There is that. <laughs> you know. So if people can generate pictures from just writing mm. in some words, and I know it's more complicated than that. Yeah. But if you have a play with it, then yeah. who is going to pay for original works if they can just generate it? Is the mm. market dead? Is it dead? Yeah. I think that should come with a warning, by the way. If you're telling people to go and try it, be prepared to lose loads of time, you know, surfing the web, that you can just sit there for hours going, ooh. So uh, use at your own risk. Um, Is the market dead? If we're talking about uh, stock, it's certainly under massive threat. If we're talking about art in general, I think there will be still people willing to pay for stuff generated by a human because the human is a massive part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, their story and all the rest of it. But when it comes to stock, ooh, watch this space. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's one of the business areas we're considering. Yeah. Is, is not stock images, but, you know, generating content that's useful and yeah. selling it. Yeah. And I suppose the question is, do we use our old school skills to generate stuff or yeah. do we get AI to help us? Yeah. Well, to- we're sat in a good position there, actually, Martin, if you think about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we, if uh, if the trends and the laws change, we still have the old school skills. So I was chatting to my brother-in-law on Sunday morning. A bit personal, I know. But, yeah. and his mate's a graphic artist. And he does album covers. And has spent his entire life doing that. And he's cacking himself. Because the people that he'd that normally hire him to do a piece of art for him, they're just jumping onto mid journey and doing it themselves. Yeah. And the question he brings up, and there's a few, I'm not going to get too much into legal stuff, but there's a, as you said, the law isn't in place yet. But these, let's call them models, generative models, haven't suddenly just been able to create images, have they? No. Um, they've learned. They've learned from, I don't, I'm not going to give you a number, but a very large proportion of images that are out on the internet. So, because it is a machine learning technique, right? Yeah. So they've essentially yeah. scoured the internet and gone, yeah. this is what these kind of pictures look like. Yeah. yeah. And then it's learned how to, how to make them. It's a fascinating process, actually. If you go on somewhere like Midjourney, you can see how it builds it up. It's really quite bizarre. It's not taking different parts of different pictures and melding no. them together to make a new picture. From the way I understand it, it starts with a page full of noise, like the static you get on your telly. Which they call a seed. And then it yeah. slowly gets rid of stuff until it looks like a picture. Yep. Um, that's terrifying. It's terrifying. Seeing what people are generating on Midjourney, and bear in mind that what Midjourney says is, you've written the prompt, you own the image. And you go, hang on, that looks just like my artwork. Yeah, or awfully familiar. Yeah. Um, and I've, you know, been experienced in crawling through stock for hours on end to find the right thing. You do come across some of the same images, right? When yeah. you're on these, and you see a lot, so there's a lot of the people who are creating these images, they'll upload it toward more than one marketplace. Yeah. And you'll see them on there. You become like, if you're operating in an area, you become familiar with certain images. Yeah. Like if you're looking for something that's tagged up with, I don't know, uh, music studio let's just do that one because yeah. that's one we've actually done yeah um and you see the same stock images and then when you use the prompt you get a awfully familiar result and you can see why some of these artists are going excuse me <laughs> yeah hang on hang on yeah. i do hate that though when you're watching a film or something and there's some like news article that they've obviously used a yeah. stock photo for and it's one you've used and it's in a netflix <laughs> film yeah. it doesn't yeah. half cheapen it you're yeah. just like and I suppose that's kind of the point, isn't it? If yeah. But this is where I think generative AI, like Leonardo Midjourney Runway, is different. Because, I mean, what are the chances of you creating the same image as somebody else? Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's, again, though, is the AI doing anything different than what an artist would do? And we're going to use that uh, fabulously woolly term of inspired by. How many times have we used that phrase? A lot. 
<laughs> a lot. A lot. But it's true, though. People do get inspired by other artwork, uh, you know, and it, uh, just talk about music again for a second because it's, it's easy to relate. Um, that's what makes a genre of music. It also makes a genre of artwork, right? And you can prompt Mid Journey to give you a specific style of artwork. You know, yeah. you can ask it to do like a, a, a 3D render or pop art, for instance. You can even get it to do like, you know, in the style of Van Gogh. I can't yeah. say that name. Is it Van Gogh or Van Gogh? Van Gogh, I, Van Gogh. I believe. Yeah. I believe. But anyway. but, or or in, the, in the style of Salvador Dali. And it's really good. And you know what else you can do? You can um, name specific photographers. Like there's a fashion photographer and you can quote his name and it'll come back in that kind of style. No. So, yeah. So it's just a legal hole, that, isn't it? So Nightmare. Legal it a, minefield, yeah. I'd say. You like create me an image in the style of this artist. Yeah. Now, because you've named that artist in the prompt. Yeah. Oh, but then that's only like, I mean, if I go back to client briefs that we've had in the past, you'll get a mood yeah. board of other people's work. Correct. Yeah. And go make something that's kind of like this. Yeah. So I suppose the, this will get proved in the courts at some point. Yeah. Someone will sort this out at some point. Yeah. I suppose the question is, are you infringing copyright? Or is it yeah. just like a really, really sped up version of, okay, let me give you an example. I don't know really want yeah. to admit this. I listened to Iron Maiden a lot when I was a kid. When you were a kid? All right, Paul. I um, bet you've listened to him in the last couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I first picked up a guitar or drums, I wanted to sound like Iron Maiden. You know, yeah. I could probably pick a better pop reference than that. Well, I mean, they're, they're early on. They're, they're, ahead of, they're the head of a genre. Yes, you know. Yeah. So I was on Spotify the other day and there's this other band called Riot City. I think they're a Swedish band. And they, they sound exactly... Oh, they love Iron Maiden over there. <laughs> and but they're just like, it's just like Iron Maiden. The kind of way the songs are laid out, the sound, the ridiculous vocals, the terrible lyrics. Even the way the solos are arranged is just, that's Iron Maiden, that becomes a genre. And another example, blues. Yeah. All blues songs sound the same, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way. They have a style. The they solos in a certain scale, the sound, yeah. they even have a sound. It's not just musicality. They have a sound. That's yeah, blues. Correct. You know, uh, we are edging into the territory there of, of what's happened in the real world, as in the meat puppets. Yeah. Um, we've had legal challenges, um, and Robin Thicke is the one I'm thinking of with the Marvin Gaye estate. That was that Blurred Lines, him. wasn't it? That was Blurred Lines. Yeah. And... This is a personal opinion. I know it's shared with a lot of people that that wasn't a ripoff. It was just in the genre. And he had to pay for that one. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, in the real world, outside of AI, that has happened. So will that happen? Well, we're watching, aren't we? The courts will, will tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we'll keep you posted about that as well. Okay. We've written our prompts. We've generated our tune or whatever. Yeah. Now we own it. So we own this thing at the moment. Oh, can I, I just want to add Go something, on. Martin, if you don't yeah. mind, just yeah. to the top where, we're, because I'm just looking at the question about is the market dead? And you gave us an example of somebody who does album cover art. Yeah. And I did just want to add at that point, uh, actually that market might well die because the returns are so low on streaming that it's a no brainer for artists to generate their own artwork. So since streaming and it, since the internet, the returns of a single sale are minuscule compared to like the returns on a physical and whether that's pictures, yeah. whether that's music, whether that's streaming. It's why half of um, America's creative community are on strike at the moment. I don't want to go too political, but no. the returns that they're getting um, per view or per sale are a lot lower. So the yeah. economics of being yeah. a creative in music or elsewhere. Yeah, uh, the budgets are squeezed, it's tight. And we, we, that, I think, may be, again, a subject for another time. But yeah. um, I think it plays into it, um, <laughs> as in people are going to be using it, no doubt. So just to conclude on that, it's, it's difficult to know. You know, AI's doing really quickly what humans do over a lifetime, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Call it inspired by, call it ripping off. It's it's difficult to know, but as it stands at the moment, you know, we write the prompts, we own it. 
Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Dramatic pause, Paul. Dramatic <laughs> yeah. pause. It was, yeah. I was thinking yeah. about it. Let's just talk about the law. Just as boring as copyright. But just as boring as copyright. Yeah. Let's I, like, I like your heading on the uh, yeah. on the sheet there. Nobody a- go on. You read it out, read it out. Go on. <laughs> AI and the law. Nobody's got a Scooby. Well, that's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure everybody will know what a Scooby is. But anyway. <laughs> Hasn't got a clue. Let's a say Scooby it. Doo. Yeah. Rhyming slang. So the way I look at this really, really generally. Governments around the world, but mainly UK and US and Europe to some extent, they're still trying to get their heads around Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So the chances of them getting around AI, where like the the rules change every week, as in yeah. not the laws, but like what you can do changes every week. It's frightening. Yeah. yeah. Are they ever going to get their heads around it to govern it? Yeah. Well, it's it's been an arms race for a while, and. Um... Yeah, they're so slow. I think this is different because it is the pace of this, I think, is shocking. Yeah. And it's taken everybody by surprise. And it, it really is that there are things I think um, people who maybe aren't aware of it, I think the things that you can do at the moment um, for the uninitiated would stagger you. I saw uh, this week that um, Instagram are planning on flagging whether something's been AI generated. Yeah. I don't know for what reason, other than, you know, maybe just disinformation to people. Yeah. And maybe that's just trying to avoid it getting completely regulated. Yeah. So, say you decide, here's my new business. I'm going to spend 20 quid on mid-journey. I'm going to generate 300 images a month of uh, people at a beach party because it's coming up to Christmas, which means people want to, advertise summer and then i'm going to put this on a stock music site because i know people are going to want it stock images site yeah what did i say music again music again oh my yeah. god come on mine <laughs> <laughs> on a stock images site so that's going to be my new business so for the next six months i'm just going to generate all these images and wow yep. i've got three and a half thousand images i'm going to set up my own stock site yep what's the danger in that that sounds really exciting let's do that yeah <laughs> Danger is <laughs> that in three months' time. <clears throat> sorry, mate. What? Just stop. Just stop there a sec. Sorry. Go on. What? One sec. I'm, what? I'm, I'm really sorry. Me electricians are right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'm going to mute. Just give me a sec. Hello, I'm back. Hello. So he sat outside in his van now, having a, a brew and a sandwich. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good. I've just put him off for a minute or two. All right. And said, if he's got some spare time, can you rock up? And he typically chooses now. <laughs> so, so I'm having some sockets done above me, so it's going to be noisy. So the glories no, of working oh yeah. from home. Yeah. Um. So, um. So I was just saying, so I used to be a photographer. Screw that. I'm going to yeah. get a mid journey account. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to write the right words to get me the right pictures. Yeah. And for the next six months, I'm going to generate thousands of pictures. Yeah. I own them all. Yeah. No one else owns them. Yeah. I'm going to put them up onto a website and I'm going to sell them to the world. Great idea. Why couldn't you do that? Well, you can. So then in six months time, there's a case and they go, yeah. actually mid journey has been trained on this artist's images and you yep. use that artist's name in all your generations. So, yep. uh, you don't own them anymore. No, your business dies. And that's the risk, isn't it? Yeah, that's the risk. But if you, if you're fast and wild, wild west, people will, uh, make money. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and we've seen that before. Yeah. I mean, that, that happened with sampling, didn't it? When yeah. sampling first came in, there was no law. Yeah. I'm talking about sampling records now. Yes, yeah. And releasing them in a new way that's yours. And I suppose yep. the people doing that were arguing, well, we've kind of changed it up. It's ours. It's a new work. Yeah. You which, it, which, to a certain extent, is true. You know, I know um, a lot of people might not see it like that, but um, collage in art is a valid form, you know. Ripping people up. were 
putting new lyrics on them, adding their own musical motif, taking something that was a small section and making it um, the whole track, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm partial to all that. Yeah. I love all yeah. that, so <laughs> fair enough. Now, I know we've been rambling on about Mid Journey and Dali and Runway, which a lot of people might have never heard of. But most people, I think, in our world, or in the general world, will have heard of Adobe or yeah. have heard of Photoshop. Yeah, so if, Photoshop. So yeah. even in Photoshop now, you can use these generative tools. You can click on a bit of your image and go, put a spaceship there. Yeah. And it'll just generate it. Or it, yeah. maybe you took a picture uh, in the morning, you can just draw a rough line around the sky and go, make it, make it sunset. And you're seeing what the general thing that, that people are saying, that's not real art, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All of that same arguments going on. But the reason that I bring up Adobe, as far as I know, they are the only people who've come out and said, use us to generate your images and we will protect you against anybody claiming copyright. Yeah. Wow. Which is a bold claim. They've got deep pockets, though, haven't they? They have got deep pockets. <laughs> I'm if not I, sure they can cover it, though. But anyway, <laughs> if I was if I was being horrible, if um, Mid Journey's like a Formula One car, then Adobe's on a trike in terms of the <laughs> quality, in my opinion, of their generative stuff. So I think they're looking for an edge. I think yeah. they're looking for an edge and going, look, our stuff may be a bit rubbish, <laughs> but at least you won't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> as i can see at the moment and i'm gonna to have to explain something it's really funny so we analyzed this these podcasts afterwards in claude right yeah, uh, yeah. and chat gpt so these are text-based ai text -based, models based, that yeah. look at text and give you some answers if you don't know what they are so we transcribe it in a fancy way uh and we upload it and we ask them to review the podcast and it always gives us some legal warnings yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think it might mention Adobe, but anyway, let's. I'm not breaking the law there, though. I just think it's a bit rubbish. No, this is fine. It's You're entitled to that opinion. In comparison to things like Mid Journey, which are just amazing, Runway, absolutely yeah. insane that you can do this stuff on there. But anyway, Adobe are reportedly going to protect people against claims, and they say mm. that's the. And this this might be two things, though. This might be the reason that their stuff is a little bit rubbish, in my opinion. It's really bold, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm just I can't help but think like that was a mistake. Because they're losing subscribers to these. Adobe have a stock image library like everyone else. So they've trained their model only on their stock images, which they reckon they've got the copyright sorted out. So they're saying they haven't scoured the internet and just right, scanned okay, what's yeah. publicly Doesn't available. But, mm. but it's probably why theirs isn't as good. Yeah. Anyway, the law isn't set yet. There isn't really isn't any law. There's an existing copyright law and people are trying to interpret it in a different way to say no you can't do that because that's kind of like my picture yeah it always comes down to the court cases though which set the precedence right yeah yeah let's see like i say we'll watch we're watching this space very closely and we'll, yeah. we'll keep you updated yeah i did have one other thing to say on this I, I'll, I'll move on after this go on we know we're talking about facebook and they're kind of saying well we just publish other people's work it's not our fault if people publish yeah. something that breaches copyright. I was just thinking, are the AI companies going to say the same? Well, yeah. it's not us that are generating the images. They're just using our technology and then they're posting it. It's nothing to do. It's not us that launched the nuclear missiles. It was somebody <laughs> with the... <laughs> wow! You just went there, Paul. Everybody's thinking. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it light and breezy. Oh, okay. You know, not like <laughs> AI is going to kill us all. I'm more Barbie, you're more Oppenheimer. <laughs> topical, topical, topical. Check you out. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we've just been talking about legal stuff, and as I may have mentioned or not mentioned a million times, Paul had a successful career in the music industry. <laughs> Don't know about successful. Well, well, anyway, yeah, go on. <laughs> more successful than me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to try and bring the subject of copyright alive and why it matters. Um, so over to you, Paul. Tell us your story. Back in the day, talking nearly thirty years ago now, I was involved with a band, um, 
And what we were doing was relatively new back then, although it sounds very old hat now. We were doing um, rock and roll with hip hop. Band was called The Dust Junkies, fronted by MC Tunes. I was going to say, I went to see Dust Junkies. Yeah. Good band, actually. Really good band. And another, a very quick aside. I formed a band with a scratcher in it because of the Dust Junkies. Because oh, I thought that go. was the cool thing to do. So anyway, moving on. Yeah, that, that's relevant, actually. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, we recorded some demos as part of this band and we were looking for a very American rock sound. And so we thought the best way to get that would be to use some producers from the States. So it was all very exciting. We went to a few studios and we worked with, with a few different producers on a trial basis to see how it felt and, you know, could always come out with something or or not as the case may be anyway we worked with the producer on a record that we were due to release that session stopped we moved on thought nothing of it and actually ended up working with somebody else which was uh, a gentleman called bob power in the end um oh no he did the mix but we we had we had this record then prior to release day our producer and MC Tunes went down to visit our lawyer, so the story goes. And this lawyer's assistant came out and said, oh, guys, do you mind if I just copy this here? Uh, and I think she was copying a cassette, believe it or not. That's how wow. long ago it was. Wow. Yeah. And she started to play it, and the um, sounded an awful lot like our record, to the point where we thought it was a remix, and record companies did that kind of thing back then they would just go and get remixes done without telling you so imagine the surprise when asking who it was we found out that it was uh, a rather famous american rocker uh, it goes by the name of bon jovi no yeah bon jovi what <laughs> yeah serious um so we've put some links in the description to two tracks um, one's Bon Jovi track, one is the Dust Junkies. Go have a listen and then come back. You only need to listen to the first 30 seconds. But, um, and I probably should say the reason we're having to do this, weirdly, is because this should probably come under fair dealing. It's going to probably give us a copyright strike and that's no good. Yeah, so we better just go and listen to the links. Anyway, we'll come back after this thing. So, did you have a listen? Can you hear the similarities? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it seemed like Bon Jovi's was a live version on that link. <laughs> yeah. Well, or maybe they just had more fans than you did. <laughs> I think that's definitely true. They were playing to tens of thousands and we were playing to five in a toilet somewhere. So, just to recap, there was some guy who was working with you, making yeah. guitar sounds. You were doing this, living in the pocket of a drug queen thing. He yeah. chuffed off to America. Back to America. This part is the conjecture bit. It's not set in stone, but yeah. All right. So so went off anyway. Then your manager and your singer popped down to your lawyers, who yep. happened to like probably represent Bon Jovi as well as you guys. That's correct. And then uh, assistant comes in and tries to copy that, and you're like, hang on. Well, hang on. What's that going on here? Whoa. Yep. And that's yeah. by accident. So that, that's how the story went. It was like after that, after we heard that, it was a knock on the door to the office, and who is that? <laughs> And he was like, Bon Jovi, why? Oh, we've got an issue. And he rep he represented us both. So. Oh, dear. Yeah. Somehow, Bon Jovi had heard our tune and maybe he was inspired by it. Nice word. Say. Nice use yeah. of the word inspired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See what we did there? It was almost yeah. like a callback. It amazing. was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, came out with that tune. So to cut it short. um. He did actually settle with us, but there were some caveats around release dates and, and all the rest of it. So, yeah. A, a negative few of that would be somebody came in and ripped somebody off. I'm not saying that's what happened, yeah. but yeah. it's just like, oh, it's just this little band in Manchester. Don't worry. We're just going to do this. Uh, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Or quite simply, it could just be, there is the possibility that two people think of the same thing at the same time. Or you've just been listening to something a lot. And then you do something yourself and you go, oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. And it doesn't even occur to you that the influence has come from somewhere else. Yeah. In, in an inspired by kind of way. In an inspired <laughs> by kind of way. But it's, it's yeah. really weird that, and I, you know, what? I'm not entirely sure how copyright works there, but 
even if you manage to recreate someone's song by accident, it's still their song, even yep. though you thought of it without coming yep. into contact with them. Yep, there's actually another story with that track. Same track. Um, you might have noticed when you looked at the links, there's another one for Dust Junkies Chorus. So just go away, have a listen to that, uh, come back, and I'll tell you all about it. I don't think we need to do another sting. Let's just say pause now, pause. <laughs> okay. uh, and you're off pause. Okay. Chorus. Yeah. So did you hear that? She's bad. She's bad. A you bit. know, you mentioned you had, um, you got a scratcher, as you call yeah. it, in, in the band. Yep. So yeah, that and... was our DJ. Yeah. And in the record that we made, that chorus had, the scratch was from uh, American rapper Easy e When we recorded the record, we were trying to clear the sample ahead of release. And back yeah. then the law was pretty settled on these things. Right. And there was sort of a going rate you know, for little, little segments like that. Cause it's a huge part of hip hop scratching. Yeah. Uh, so there was kind of like a, an agreed upon going rate. I don't think it was ever formalized exactly, but you could sort of expect how much you were going to pay. At least this is what the record company and legal were advising us. Anyway, what had happened is Easy E had died and the people who were looking after his estate. Yeah. When the request to use a sample came through, just put in an outrageous amount, like a really outrageous amount. And now we were forced to act then to, so either we pay, yeah. uh, which would have meant we'd have made no money on the record whatsoever. I'm not saying we did, but it would yeah. have meant that anyway. To be really clear, that meant that every time you sold a record, you have to pay easy. Yeah. Yeah. Or easy as a state. I love the fact that I'm just saying it like I know that world completely. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine like, you know easy as well. Yeah, yeah I imagine he's like, like he, he's like really big, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. totally, totally part of my youth, that Paul. Yeah, yeah. NWA, yeah. heard of them? Yeah, Northwest yeah. Association. <laughs> yeah. That, exactly that one. I'm not going to say what the title of that band is called. We'll just no. call it NWA. But anyway, yeah. so we were faced with either uh, going into a legal battle yeah. um, or another choice was to re-record. Now, at this point, the record had a release schedule and we also had a promotional run-in for that, which included, we were on a Radio 1 um, road show at the time, which was like a, a daily tour almost. Yeah. Um, and we were on a fairly big show back in the 90s called TFI Friday, where they'd have a live band on. And the idea was we'd be on the radio all week, on the TV on Friday night, and the record in the shops on the Saturday. Right. This legal battle completely put paid to that it made it a mess so as in the record won't be available and so what we decided to do was re-record that chorus so it's actually all of us or shouting instead of um <laughs> instead of easy -E. so there's a scratch and then we all shout it so it was a bit bit of a compromise if i'm honest did you um, shout the same lyric yeah yeah, give us uh, a, give, go on, Paul. What did it sound like? Go on. Oh, wait, I'm just thinking, didn't we shout the same lyric? She's, yeah, we did. We did yeah. all shout. Yeah, we did all shout the same lyric. You want me to perform She's Bad Nobody? I'm not going to do it. Oh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, so what happened was we, we, we did re-record it, but failed to get it in the shops on the Saturday anyway, so it was too late. What I love about that story, it is like a David and Goliath story. Yeah. And I do <laughs> like the fact that it was settled. It's great. But this is why copyright's important. It is. There within one record, we've got uh, two cases of it, us being ripped off and us ripping someone else. Yeah. <laughs> so so where this might seem like a boring subject, if you make money out of creativity or creating copyrightable products, then it's really important and it could really affect everything that you're doing and it's definitely going to affect everything we're doing. One of the comments people said was, don't say you're going to have a sting. And then in one of the other comments, somebody said, I like the way you announce your sting. Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, opinions are <laughs> like our souls, aren't they? Everyone's <laughs> got one. Oh, yeah. have you heard of James Hype? No. I know, I know I'm interrupting. Yeah, he's a big right. DJ. Right? Yeah, probably, I, I'd say he's about the biggest DJ there is at the moment. So I've definitely heard of him because I'm really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does, uh, he does uh, a blog or vlog, if you like. Yeah. yeah. And he, he announces all his transitions and kind of moves his hand to the left. So he just goes, Go. transition, this is it. So that's what we're doing. Let's announce the sting. Yeah, like James Hype, inspired like, by 
Inspired it's, by. <laughs> it goes with down with the kids. And inspired all by yeah. James Hype. Here's yeah. the thing, I'm moving my arm to the right. So, a uh, bit we haven't really talked about is what we do on this podcast is talk. Yeah. Your voice. So there's an area of AI that's developing really quick. Yeah. Which is about faking people's voices. And you'll have seen this on YouTube. And this is like beyond cassette boy. This is beyond cutting up pe pits of people's dialogue to make them say something else. Yeah. This is completely imagining new voices. Yeah. We're in deep fake territory here, aren't we? We but are. It's deep, uh, deep fake to the masses. Yeah. I mean... So I'm not going to go into it in great detail, just going to no. skirt over it because we're going to do a whole episode on this because there is a massive impact on people. Yeah. So like yeah. there's Mid Journey or Dali, we've mentioned these loads of time for pictures. Uh, there's hundreds, I think I found like hundreds. I found about 23 different ones that I tried out for doing AI voice. Oh, why, why, did we, why did we try those, Martin? <laughs> just seeing what was possible, Paul. Yeah, exactly. You know. Or just think will be revealed. Yeah. I mean, there is a real business case for this. People making voiceover, yep. doing voiceover uh, videos on YouTube, being able to generate a convincing voice without having to record it. Oh, or, or even edit, edit your own voice. Which yeah. brings me nicely to one that takes your voice and changes it. Mm -hmm. And it, um, so you keep your performance. And this isn't just retuning. This isn't just like making me sound like a chipmunk. Mm. Or something like this. So, could you believe... I, I, I haven't heard these. I'm quite excited. No. Can you believe that this is actually me? Here we go. So, it's uh, five to eight in the morning, and I'm not sure uh, whether this voice stuff's any good. So, I'm going to try and put this through different voices and see what happens. Uh, crazy, crazy times. So, that's me. That, that's better, that. And Can I work with her? That's yeah, it. all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> so that's that's a thing called altered ai that is and it's just crazy powerful and that's one yeah. of their one of their voices it keeps all your intonation and your performance and like i did say yeah. that like that i just woken up it right. was it was that time in the morning and right. i didn't know what to say and i thought oh, i was going to try this <laughs> so we haven't really covered doing text stuff because we talked yeah. about that before. I think in the last episode, we did a load of text stuff uh, yeah. when we were talking about using Claude. But um, I played a little bit of this in uh, the last episode, but this is 11 labs and they have a load of voices that are trained. So, and by that, I mean, it might be like Wayne, he's American and he's happy. Right, and then yeah. you can type some text in and then Wayne will speak the text for you. Or, you know, this is, Sandra, she's depressed from stop pulls. <laughs> Casting dispersions on poor old Stockport. Eh? No, I'm, only, I'm from Stockport. It's all right. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, so what we did was we used the stuff from the last episode where we got Claude to generate a trailer script. I bang that trailer script into Eleven Labs and I pick some different voices, um, let them speak them, and I've just cut a few together. So you just get an idea of what's possible. Here we go. After years of analog success, lifelong media vets Martin and Paul are entering the digital unknown, relying on AI to navigate their unfamiliar environment. Like meat puppets fumbling to please their all-knowing AI overlords, the tech-naive duo will either adapt or become obsolete. Join these plucky, wisecracking founders as they document the genuine struggles and harebrained antics of using machine learning to launch their startup's podcast. Will artificially intelligent guides rocket them to digital disruption? Or will the learning curve squash their scrappy moxie? Stay tuned for the triumphant failures of two savvy dinosaurs striving to evolve on the meat puppets. Savvy dinosaurs! Savvy dinosaurs! I love the way he says that. Savvy dinosaur. I love trailer guy. He's ace. I'm going to quickly just go through some other things. So it's not only voice that gets created in audio. So AI generated music. Paul, so um, so I seem, as I seem to have been itching to get to this point, because I kept on saying stop music, stop music when we were talking about yeah. stop images. <laughs> yeah. It's almost another call back there, Mike. I thought you did it deliberately. Oh my, I know, my God. There's <laughs> loads of stock stock images sites. There's loads of stock music sites. So this is places you can go and just pay some money to use this music and it won't get you into trouble. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, that's not under story. a non-exclusive license. Which, exactly. Uh, so other people can use it as well. Yeah. So Meta, yeah. the Facebook people, they've launched this thing called AudioCraft, where you can type in some words, and uh, based on those words, it will generate some music or some uh, noise. So this is uh, Meta. The prompt was, earthy tones, environmentally conscious, uh, ukulele-infused, harmonic, breezy, oh easygoing, God. organic instrumentation, gentle grooves. I've been sat in a studio and heard many comments like this. Do you want to know my favourite one of all time? Was? Go on, go on. More audio. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Earthy tones, environmental conscious, ukulele infused, harmonic, breezy, easygoing, organic instruments, and gentle grooves, if you'd forgotten. <laughs> not bad, that, is it? Not bad, and not earthy enough. No, it sounds like a... A commercial for a place that sells health foods. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. Come on it down. Really does, yeah. Get your healthy food here. It really sounds like that. Or, or a spa day. Or yeah. a spa oh. day. Treat your loved one this afternoon with a spa <laughs> down at... Uh, yeah, it really worked that. But... People Can we get AI it? trailer voice guy to do that advert? Oh, over I that. wish I'd I just... been set up for that. <laughs> I'm not set up for that. No. Oh. Maybe right. next time. So you can't see this, Paul, but I put my arms to the right again. Okay. Sting. Transition. Sting. Transition. <laughs> okay. Is copyright going to be a thing anymore? Can you yeah. even contemplate starting a business around it if everyone can generate what they want? I think it depends on the human. I do think people will still want to purchase something from humans. People will be purchasing, whether that's a license or, you know, um, I think we've almost got two tiers now. One tier is AI, one tier is human. It is such a big subject. Huge. It's massive. Yeah. So we'll probably revisit this many times. I, I keep on going peaks and troughs. So you're just like, God, there's so much opportunity. I can do all this now. This is amazing. Yeah. Through to, this is terrible. Oh, this is just going to ruin everything. Hey, oh my God. Hey, oh my <laughs> God. And I think that's going to carry on, which is why we'll revisit this. I yes. think. Yeah. We've discussed copyright. Hopefully we made it a little bit interesting. I hate <laughs> copyright. I hate it. I hate it. I love yeah. it. I hate it. I yeah. hate it. <laughs> oh, if you want to really bore anyone in a pub, just tell them about music copyright. Or point them to this pod. Just point them our way. <laughs> it's, it's really boring. It's really dull, but it's how a load of creatives make their money. Yes. And um, it's partially, you know, it's going to really affect uh, our business model going forward as we rely more on this and selling Positively things Positively or negatively. Stay well, yeah. tuned. I know this, you know, it, bloody hell, new company could be over in a month. Might have to <laughs> do something else. Yeah, you know, uh, stay tuned for next month where we're launching the window cleaning podcast, <laughs> our new business where we're cleaning windows because AI yeah. can't. Uh, and we've got the AI, AI administrators in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, next episode, we've got a few working titles for the next one um, Rage Against the Pod Bots. Oh, I want to do that. Are we bot casting? Are we podcasting? It's the robo apocalypse of podcasting. You, see, you, you had shouted at me earlier for nuclear missiles. You're going on about robo apocalypse and all sorts. Well, anyway, those <laughs> those were imagined by Claude, and we're going to take you through how we're using AI to help us make this entire podcast. That's yes. next time, and then after that, we're going to be doing some fun voice stuff, scary voice stuff. So that's cool. it. We don't we don't have a sign off, Paul. No, sting, sting, play the sting. Sting, play the sting. Bye sting, now. Sting, bye.